Hello, and welcome to the first lesson of Introductory Programming with C++. I am your host, Human Hardware. And today, since this is our first lesson, I thought it would be appropriate, because this is an introductory course, to go over setting up your development environment. That's where you're going to be writing your code, compiling, and testing things. So to start with, let's go over the system. I am running Ubuntu, that's a Linux distro. Uh, this is Ubuntu 14.04. .04. Now, this tutorial is aimed at any operating system, so Linux, my, uh, Microsoft Windows, or Mac OS, because the IDE, the Integrated Development Environment, where you're going to be writing your code, is completely cross-platform, so you can install it on any of these. Now, I'm choosing to use Linux for a couple reasons. A, there's a couple videos down the line where having some things in Linux would be appropriate. However, this is not going to be Linux specific. We're not going to be delving into anything specific to the Linux operating system. And the second reason is I've got a nice development set up in Linux already. So that's what I'm going to be sticking with. Now, like I said, the development environment we're going to be using is completely cross-platform, and that development environment is this. We're going to be using the CodeBlocks IDE. Now, uh, there's open source cross-platform for EC, C++, and Fortran IDE. So it's got a whole bunch of different languages. We're just going to be focusing on C++. So, like I said, cross-platform, you can install this for anything. Now. Upside to Linux is there are compilers, mainly GCC and G++, you don't have to know what those are just yet, that are nice and easy to install and get running. Windows, it's a little more of a pain. However, that's all handled in the CodeBlocks installer. If you just go to Downloads, and I'll link to this in the video sources. It's very straightforward to just download and install and get it up and running. Not a big deal, not going to go over that in this video. Uh, for Linux, it's exactly the same thing. You can open this up in whatever software center you're using. Uh, you can probably download the DEB from, from the CodeBlocks website. All straightforward. Uh, for Linux users, though, to make sure that it is working, what you should do is test out, open up your terminal, uh, the shortcut Control-Alt-T, it's very useful. Uh, type in GCC, just make sure that you get fatal error no input files, that means GCC is installed, and G++, which means, again, fatal error no input files means G++ is installed. That means everything's working, everything's installed, everything's good. Windows, you can't do this, you just have to take it on faith that you chose the right installer and everything worked properly. If it will, what we do next will work. So what we're going to do next is open up the CodeBlocks IDE. And I'm going to close this project. Now, CodeBlocks is a very nice and simple development environment. It's got a lot of nice tools which make it very easy to use and very easy to both write and debug code. Uh, to start with, you're going to create a new project. Now, I do suggest that for this, you create a program folder where all of your projects and source code are going to be stored so that it's easy to find later and you can go back and make reference to. Always good to have this just in case. Now, code blocks to start a new project, file new project. Now, there are quite a few things you can choose from here. You're going to want to choose console application. Go. And then you're going to choose the language. So we're going to do C. And this is where you create a project title. So I'm going to call this project Hello World. And just hit next. Just leave this as is. And there we go. It creates the project. So where is everything? If you look over here on the left, this is completely stock, completely new, nothing's been moved around, so it should be where it is on your system. 
If you come over here, you'll see your workspace. This is where all of your projects are that you have open. So here's the Hello World project, and if I go into Sources, you see a file called main.cpp. And here it is. This is your program. Now, if you come up here, hit the little gear. This means build. This is the first thing you do when you want to test a program. Building it compiles it, means it makes it into something that the machine can run. And it also checks for errors. So as you can see down here at the bottom, if I make this a little bigger, process terminated, status, no errors, no warnings. So we're all good. Pull this back down. And then hit the play error, which means run. And you should get a little terminal that pops up saying hello world. Or down here you might also see something which prints that out. So there it is. That is your first C++ program. Granted, you didn't do that much work, but we're not doing that much in the first video. We're just trying to get everything set up. So, Because this is the first video, just going to go over some of the points of code blocks, where things are, and some central tenets to getting started with programming. So you've got build, run, and build and run. You can choose different build options. We're not going to get into that just yet. Just know it's there. And then these are your debugging menus. Now, the G plus, uh, sorry, the code blocks IDE debugger is very nice. It has all sorts of nice watch windows. You can see call stack, memory dump, all these nice things which make it very easy to debug code. So you don't have to do anything with the terminal. It's all handled right here. Uh, it also has a nice suite of plugins. There we go. So there are some plugins that come installed already, and we're not going to do anything more. However, there are some plugins that, if you go looking around, that do make this a lot easier if you do want to continue with programming. So there are plugins in there which detect memory leaks and do all sorts of clever watching with variables. Things we'll get into later, but just know it's all there and it's very clever and it's very nice. Now this is your program. This is the file. This is where things get run. So when it comes to writing your program, there's a certain amount of layout which is good to make sure it's clean and readable. This is all part of writing what's good code. Now, the first part to writing good code is adopting a white space style. Now, you can see that this is just demo code, so this is something someone already wrote. White space is the space between operators, or spaces between characters, like this double left arrow here. There's a space between where the arrow ends and the start of this hello world. And there's a space here and a space here. That's white space. Um, where you put this semicolon, or not the semicolon, this curly bracket. Is it going to be at the same line, or is it going to be on the next line? See, this is all about developing a programming style. It's something that suits you, and something that suits your how you read code. Now, obviously, it's going to be shaped quite heavily by the way I write code, but as you program and as you do some of the assignments, you'll find that you get into your own style. You'll find that you write code that's almost pretty looking. And that's what you should really go for, something that has a style, something that you can just jump into and immediately understand, okay, this is nested within this, this is where this ends, everything's nice and easy. Now, second thing, very important, is comments. That's a comment. This is also a comment. Comments aren't part of the program. When you run the program, they don't do anything. They are just used for whoever is reading the code. So anytime you have code that's complex or you had to do a lot of stuff to fit that that you had to figure out, stuff you might come back to at a later point, or something that someone else is going to come back to at a later point. Comments are very useful tools. 
So I will comment code when doing these videos because it's a lot easier for me to just be typing out a program to show you how things work and then put a little comment so that when you go back and look at the program, you can just go, oh yeah, that's how this works or that's what this function does. So commenting is useful. Commenting is very useful. You should comment very often. So these are how you write comments. So comments can be either double slash, which just creates one line of comments, or you can have slash asterisk asterisk slash, which creates a block comment. So anything in between the two is a comment. This is useful for commenting out large sections of code, stuff that you might come back to later, or just stuff you don't want to delete, but you might need at a later point. So these are comments, and this is probably going to be, like I said, the main way I con or I address people, or you guys watching the lessons. Now, the third thing, the third tenant, is having a good layout. So if I delete these for a second, up here at the top is going to be your includes. Don't know what those are just yet, but I'm just trying to lay out how the layout works. Your includes, your variables, and then your functions. That's how it should be laid out. Because it should be clean. You shouldn't have all these different lines of things in different places. It should be orderly and segmented. Because, again, it's all about readability. And so those are the three tenets. Those are the things you should always keep in mind when writing code. Basically, it's cleanliness, cleanliness, and readableness. So that's really it for this video. Uh, I hope that this all made sense and that you can get your own IDE running for this. Uh, again, it's pretty straightforward to just download it. I give you the link. You can just download it, install it. And as long as you hit build and then run and something like this pops up, you see hello world, you know it's working. Now, between now and the next video, there's not much you can do with this program. I'd like to say play around with it, but there's not much to do. It is the most basic program there is. The Hello World program is the program that when you first learn a language, it's sort of the baseline. It's the first program you write. Just because it shows how to get output from the program to the user. So what you can do in here is you can take this string and just change it to something like this. Build. Always build first and then run. And you can see, oh, where'd it go? See, it changes the output. So that's about the extent you can play around with this. But experiment. Do something. Break it. That's sort of the point of programming. It's to break it and then desperately try and fix it and then understand what went wrong and not to make that mistake again. Or make that mistake again and have it do something else. Joys of programming. So that is it for this lesson. I will see you in the next video.